beautiful Aries friends and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2020 where Aries this month we get Jupiter coming out of retrograde Saturn coming out of retrograde your ruling planet Mars going into retrograde not to mention we have got both Venus and the Sun sitting in mutual reception this month in your joy and relationship houses. So I think it's going to be a pretty impactful month, but I do want to caution you right at the beginning, just set your mind frame that even though we've got stuff shifting and turning directions, for the most part of this month, we do still have a pretty high retrograde energy going on. So things are not forcing and judging forward. And I tell you that, Aries, because it is so critical important, I think, Aries, for you not to let yourself get overtired, over pushed, overworked. We're still in a relatively slow speed and then your ruling energy takes that retrograde. So you don't want to be push, 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 and you're exhausted because I think that that will really do some damage to you this month. So if you can pay attention, just kind of know that yes, you still got to go with the flow. We're still celebrating retrogrades, not freaking out about them, but work smarter, not harder with the energy that are around you, okay? All right, before we jump in and talk about what's going on this month, we've got a whole handful of delicious goodies and treats and beautiful people coming over to the Eat and Greets this month to teach from us. And some of them are fellow YouTubers. I'm so excited. We've got Athen Chimenti coming over. If you've ever watched anything from Mastering the Zodiac, he talks about true sidereal astrology. So we're gonna have him come over and look at some of the worldviews from both the Western tropical perspective and the true sidereal perspective. Great stuff. Becca Tarnas will be here. Michael A. Bryan, Kristen Caldell, um, Achuta Bava will be here as well. Vanessa Montgomery, Sarah D. Haven is coming and we're going to take apart some different asteroids that we don't normally talk about on this channel. Sarah's beautiful work talks about how you honor some of the darker asteroids because that actually shows you where to go to get the light. So such a good month of people coming to visit and I am still working on that Michelle Knight collaboration. She has finally said yes she is down for it i'm going to be getting with her when she's back from vacation so i'm so excited to continue to bring you goodness over there make sure you check out the eat and greet playlist it'll be in the description box down below as well the um, autumn equinox gifts are out for sale and that is in the description box down below as well all right aries let's do it let's get into this thing Right at the beginning of the month, we come in, we're opening this month with a beautiful full moon in the energy of Pisces. Now, this is going to happen at 10 degrees of Pisces, okay? So make sure you locate that on your chart. And if you don't have a chart, make sure you click down below and get one or pull a free one. This lights up for you, Aries, your 12th house space. This is, in this sun-moon opposition, one of the things that we find, I think, in the 12th house space, Aries, the question that you get to ask here is, where are you really able and willing and ready to heal? Where are you willing and able and ready to let some things transition out? Now, I want to throw you a perspective here, right? So the 12th house is the house of hidden things, things that walk in between the worlds, right? It's a house of meditation, of prayer, of surrender, spiritual awakening, creativity. We do all of those things. But at this point in September, right, we're more than halfway through the year. Aries, at this point, the 12th house, when we actually watch the astrological movement of it, the sun rises through the 12th house and it comes down through the seventh. So even though this is a house of endings, transitions, this is also a house of your own healing, your own rising, your own new beginning that comes from a place of solid surrendering where you have let everything come together. You're ready to make some decisions of how you'd like to rise differently. So I just want to give you that visual to kind of think of. And if you haven't studied anything about the actual astronomy of what happens in the astrology when you look at your chart, Shane M. Nygaard is a beautiful person. He just did a talk about that. Check that out. But as you consider this here in September, what are you willing and ready at this full moon? You've got all the light shown on this area. What are you willing to put down, transition, delve a little bit deeper into so that whatever has been in the dank and the dark and the hidden can be the source of your own rising here as well? What are you willing to bring to culmination, Aries? I love that thought and that visual for you this month. 
All right, on the fifth, we see Mercury, our planet of communication, of decision-making, thinking, of the mind. He's going to move into the energy of Libra, so lighting up your seventh house space. So what we know is that, first of all, Mercury being of the mouth, in Libra, which wants balance and really is Venetian, there's a lot of diplomacy that comes to your decision-making, to your conversations that you're having, all kinds of relationships from intimate relationships, how you talk to yourself, business contract relationships. They're all going to get a little bit busy with Mercury being here. And I would even think too, at this particular point, because we've got so much social interaction happening on the internet, international conversations may be happening, you know? So is this, as Mercury comes into the seventh house, are you forming new relationships where you're going to do different kind of business in some way, shape or form? Either way, Mercury is looking to help you have solid diplomatic (laughs) communication here, make these contracts, pick out new patterns that are going to help you in your relationships for sure. So it's a lovely energy for getting busy chatting in these relationships. On the sixth, we're going to see Venus enter into the energy of Leo. This lights up your fifth house place. Now, Venus in Leo is fun, joy, beautiful communication. There's creativity that's available here. This is a wonderful energy. If you have children, you may find that you have a little bit more harmony around the children things. How about school? We're trying to figure that whole thing out. You know, Venus coming in here, I think is going to offer an opening for some harmony, but also bring some magnetism to this area. It could most certainly bring some romance into your life for sure. And I think as we see when we get to the end of the month and we also see, um, the sun move into the energy and we see these two in mutual reception. You see that there is play, there is joy around these relationships. So if Venus offers you an opportunity for some fun, some joy, some romance, I say take it. But also Venus could definitely be looking to help you think of different ways to bring value to this particular beginning area of your life. How do you take a hobby and turn that into something you can make money, right? On the 9th, we see Mars taking the retrograde now. Now, Mars is going to begin this retrograde at 28 degrees of Aries, and it's going to end it November 14th at 15 degrees. So those are the degree markers that you want to be watching for in your chart and in whatever aspects it's making to see how it's going to impact you. Now, this is obviously in the first house. So in a retrograde, we go back, we rethink, relook at, redo with Mars energy. This is about what are you doing Aries. You got to go back over. What are your desires? Are you doing things that you desire to do? Or are you doing the trudge of life over there? How are you showing up in your identity here, Aries, right? Or have you assumed an identity that you're like, hold on, this doesn't really fit. This Mars retrograde time, first of all, we don't get this every year. So it's been a couple years. Let's re-look over your identity, how you're showing up, how you're coming out, how you're acting. What are your behaviors? telling the world around you. You know, are you showing up as a spiritual flower online and then you have these other actions that would contradict that? Are you showing up and you want to be this hustler, this warrior, but what's happening is you're actually just so exhausted, you can't actually do? Are you being too small? Is it time to be bigger? What are you doing is what this energy is going to ask you to re-look over. I also feel like for many Aries people, as I'm seeing it, I'm being shown your body. So truly, you may be going back over what do you need to be doing to actually take care of your body at this stage in your life and at this stage of what's best and what's healthy for you, okay? September 13th, we see Jupiter coming direct again out of retrograde, 17 degrees of Capricorn. This lights up the 10th house space for you. So things in your career, if career has been feeling like, oh my God, are we there yet? (laughs) Very slow. Aries, you can start to see some movement forward. Now, is it going to be slow movement forward? The things you've been working hard on, now Jupiter can start to usher in some movement forward. The goals that you've had in this area, how you've wanted to expand. Oh, okay. Somebody you are taking on an online business or you're connecting maybe with that mercury in the seventh you're connecting with someone who's showing you how to take your business bigger that's what's happening here as jupiter comes out of this retrograde time so if that's you keep me posted in the comment section down below but jupiter here is ready to bring those delayed goodnesses to you that you have been working on over this last handful of months on the 17th we've got a new moon happening in the energy of virgo this is going to light up the sixth house at 25 degrees of virgo okay 
Now, a new moon is the darkest moon phase. So you don't really know. You're working off of a lot of intuition, off of a lot of magic, a lot of hope here. But Virgo is here to help you find the step-by-step -step way through whatever this new, new area of service new area of skills. Do you have skills and training you'd like to amp? Um, things of writing, of creating, of analyzing something. It's a very productive, get things in order, reorganize kind of energy. So at this new moon, what do you need to do to get organized, to get healthy, to get well, to, to be of service to something you want to do? Is this also an energy at this new moon in the sixth house where you're wanting to pay a bit more attention to your daily schedule? Does your daily schedule feel overwhelming or feel like it just needs a little adjustment? This Virgo new moon over the next four weeks is going to help you prioritize and zap that bad boy down to what it needs to be for sure. On the 22nd, the sun enters into the energy of Libra. Now, this is that placement. Oh, it lights up your seventh house. So we've got light, heat, life, and vitality, plus Mercury over there. Everybody's doing their best life. Relationships are busy. But this is this placement where we have Venus over here in Leo in the fifth house, and then we've got the sun over here in Libra. This is called mutual reception because the sun rules the energy of Libra, or the energy of Leo, but Venus rules the energy of Libra. So they're in mutual reception. They're like, pleasure to be in your house, right? So as we see these two come together, this is the joy and the play of relationships. But the sun also brings light, heat, life, vitality. I am motivated by the sun. We are motivated in our relationships. If your relationships have needed some harmony, if you've been married for a long time and you need some harmony, you need some judge, you need some beauty, you need some good eats, Venus is pulling that in over here. The sun is pulling that in over here and it's all coming under this gaze of a lot of creativity and a lot of joy. So really eat that up. And I'm telling you, whatever these new connections are that are actually helping you with your work, eat those up this month as well, Aries. Please keep me posted on who that's happening for. I would, I would love to hear about that. On the 27th, we see Mercury entering into the energy of Scorpio. Now our thinking is going to get deeper. We're going to have some depth here. We're going to be observers of what's going on. We're going to be um, observing our emotions, our fears, our depth, our intimate relationships, our independence or lack of independence in our lives, right? This is a beautiful get kind of deep and reflective and observe what's going on down here energy. So delicious in the eighth house for astrology, astronomy, tarot, psychotherapy, digging out, looking at, looking over anything that you regret, you felt guilt with, anything that's a little bit more taboo. Mercury here, do you need to have a conversation about your sex life, about what drives this sexuality and this passion to create from, from the depths of our chakra energy, right? Being super polite and super um, superficial is not really what Mercury is doing in this energy at all. So you likely will not experience that. For some people in the eighth house, this will be a conversation or a change um, around your partner's money or something you're connected with where you get the benefit, but you're not necessarily earning it. An inheritance, maybe taxes, maybe, hell, maybe another stimulus check. I mean, who knows, right? But those kinds of things in a partnership way will also ask for your magnifying glass level attention with this Mercury here. Now, as we close out this brilliant month, on the 29th, we're going to see Saturn coming direct again in the energy of Capricorn. So again, up there direct with now Jupiter and Saturn being in Capricorn up there. Saturn's coming out at 25 degrees as well. Now, as Saturn comes out of this retrograde in the 10th house, it's really going to ask you, Aries, have you gone back over who and what you want to do in this world? Have you crystallized some of the lessons? Do you have some mastery over how to be in this material world? How to create your stand, create your name? It's going to pull your focus back down into what did you adjust over this handful of months so you can make your way with your career, make your way with your reputation and your name to be known right and it's very much so in a material plane because Capricorn is an earth energy so you've sought freedom you've sought movement you've sought mastery in this area where are you prepared to let this thing grow and have you at that next level now Aries beautiful questions and I think that this Mars retrograde in your sign will show you how to move a little bit different in this area as well 
All right, my beautiful friends. Thank you so much for sitting tight with me. I hope that this informs your month and gives you a little view of what's coming. I always get asked, is this for sun, moon, or rising? I pull a solar chart when I do these, so the intention is to speak to your sun energy. If you would like to align it with your chart, you can certainly listen for your rising, your moon. You can really listen for any planet you would like to, but the intention of this is the sun. But the best thing to do, no matter what, is to grab your chart and see how these aspects and these energies are impacting you. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the eat and greets. I'll see you in the weeklies, and I will just see you very soon. Bye, Aries.